Pony, and welcome back into my Mala Pony review series. And today's video will be the review of Season 7B. Season 7A, I should say. Sorry, sorry, sorry. But the first half of Season 7. The reason I'm doing this is because basically Mala Pony is returning this August with the, the second half of Season 7. I'm really excited, and I really want to re review and say every something about every single episode I saw. To be honest, this is one of the best seasons ever I've seen so far. So many cool things happening in season are just amazing fan services. Every single year there's always a new season. Which I think I'm going to go for forever, but not exactly sure. But let's just hope season 7 probably won't be the end. So pretty much let me start off with the first episode of Celestial Advice. The one thing I like about this episode is the fact that you get a very clever moral. Basically, Twas was thinking about sending Stalag Glimmer away because you, we all know in the past of season 1, Hello. Celestia sends Twilight to Ponyville in Princess Magic Part 1. So pretty much, it makes sense that Twilight is now, I, Twilight is now uh, Starlight's teacher, so it makes sense. Okay, and basically Celestia and Twilight go for this amazing confession going on about where to send her, like in, in the Changeling, to the Changelings, uh, the Crystal Empire with Sunburst and with Sunburst. And pretty much in Ember's place with the Dragon Kingdom, I believe. But twice is a bit lost with this. So she pretty much goes a little annoying around it. But pretty much, this episode is good because that's a great moral. And the moral of this episode I learned was, some people might not be ready, so don't push them way too far. So, that's a great message. Next up is All Bottled Up. A two-plot episode involving the main six, Trixie and Starlight. Well... Trixie and Stella, I mean, while on the map, as the plot A, Trixie actually makes the map disappear! Dun dun dun! Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Sorry, your pony. <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> I just thought it was really funny. But seriously, Trixie is kind of a, of a little weird at plot in this, since she actually makes Stella even more angry with bottling her emotions. Pretty much, Stella blows up her emotions in a bottle with the red evil magic coming out of her horn. And so, pretty much it goes way too scary as Trixie and Star try to find the map, and they do find it, which is kind of good. Of course, for the main six plots, they pretty much have a friendship anniversary. I love the song, actually, that they were singing. I think it was called Best Friends You Out of Time, and it was actually a pretty good song. Because you got all the main six, they're singing, and they're, they're happy and stuff, and yeah. The third episode is actually an episode focusing more on Flurry Hearts' abilities, and that is a flurry of emotions. A Twilight and Flurry Heart plot episode. Pretty much, Twilight babysits Flurry Heart, which was an idea I had before, but oh well. I guess that's what he's going to do first. Whatever. So pretty much, Flurry Heart, we get all this amazing stuff from the episode. And the cool thing about this episode is we get to learn more about Flurry Heart, which is not the expectable thing you expect. But seriously, I like how the writers are putting Flurry Heart into a situation with Twilight. So it's kind of having like a, like a different plot. Meanwhile... Shining Armor and Cadence are just there, and they're pretty much just like, expecting some things like art with Shining Armor. Who knows if actually Shining Armor has a friend, but I forgot his name in the episode. Episode 4, I believe, was Solo and Mod Rot Pie, and it was actually a return to Mod Pie again in Season 7. Although this time Solo befriends Mod Pie, and it actually turns out that Mod Pie doesn't really, have, doesn't really want to have friends. And the people getting in the way. Of course, this episode as moral is actually pretty clever. Is don't push some some other people, which don't want to have friends. I mean, it's not really nice either. But seriously, the episode is pretty good. I don't really think of a bad episode. Oh yeah, here's a very good one. Floreshai leaves in. So pretty much the episode is actually something. This is the second time Floreshai has a feeling for something, and pretty much Floreshai is sort of like the the shy one in the group, but always she actually decides to to follow up her spirit and pretty much her dream is to open a sanctuary and she calls a few pom ponies to help her although they turn out they actually don't listen to Fluttershy and mess up everything. But basically the reason why I love this episode so much is because Fluttershy is trying something new. Honestly, this is actually pretty clever. Uh, opening a sanctuary is actually a pretty clever idea. So consider it a good episode. <laughs> now, we have an episode... Uh, let's see, which episode I got to? <laughs> I can't even remember. Some episodes I can't remember, guys. Sorry. Episode 6. Now it's time for episode 6. 
I just need a bit of time to remember which episode was because I honestly haven't seen my in a long time and I forgot the episodes. So I might just not count the episodes. I'll just go home and I, I, I just can't. I just can't. I just can't remember. Although I do remember an episode of Pinkie Pie and Yak Yakinstun, which was actually a pretty hate character in Milo Pony. Although, it's actually kind of cool. Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Parachute Glidance! I just remembered! Parachute Glidance! The episode where Rainbow Dash's parents are revealed! Oh. My. Gosh. <laughs> this episode was amazing. It had a great moral. It had a great visuality. And also, Rainbow Dash looks like that her parents were cheering on her. And they were doing something good for her and supporting her. Which is kind of like a parent parental, um, Glidens lesson. Which is kind of cool. Oh yeah. And then we have an episode, Honest Apple. This one, I hate a bit. Honestly, this episode has a Rarity and Applejack plot. And literally, we all know that Rarity and Applejack might be the worst characters of the show because, let's just say that Applejack goes way too far in this episode. She's completely out of character, but the one part that I do did like is the fact that Applejack learned her lesson to not be so honest. There's also a funny part where Rarity rock and rolls on a... <laughs> on the show, pretend she was on a guitar, but it was actually Pinkie Pie's so little... Ukulele, although it's pretty funny. It's like a reference in my opinion. And now on to one of the best episodes I've seen so far. I think it's Royal Problems. This is probably one not my number one best, I think. Pretty much Royal Problems has a Celestia and Luna plot. And this is like the best this is one of the best episodes because Celestia and Luna get so much screen time in this episode. Like 20, 20 minutes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Finally. And we get like this whole thing with the ship breaking. We get some interesting things such as Twilight pretending to be a ballerina, which is kind of funny. And I actually found out basically one thing I actually did not see that coming is Stella switching uh, the princess's cutie marks. And they're forced to like do their duties. Luna has to smile all day because, because well, kids won't take pictures for a camping trip. Of course, for Celestia, she has to, like, save ponies from their dreams. That's pretty much Luna's job, but, you know, those have switch roles in this episode. And the evil version of Celestia Daybreaker was revealed in the episode. I was like, oh my gosh! I was, like, so freaked out out of this. I actually loved it because, I mean, this was a really interesting episode. And even the ending is good because, let's just say that some says, person's lives may be harder than you think. Then we're gonna move on to episode 12, Discord and Harmony. Now, this episode is actually interesting too because I like how they did with the Discord. The fact that he's actually a chaos a chaos creature means that if he doesn't do chaos, he'll probably pass out. I pretty much this is the lesson I learned from this episode. Also, you don't have to change yourself sometimes for something. And pretty much, I like how Discord does all the changes and stuff with all the singing things. Kak is like a, rest and, uh, a reference to something. And this actually had like... Like, the last of Twilight in this episode. It's like, just Discord and Flourish High, which is kind of cute. So, yeah, I still ship them now. <laughs> and last but not least, the last episode, The Perfect Pair. This episode was mind-blowing. It actually showed Applejack's parents. Finally! Seven years of waiting, and finally they're revealing it. <laughs> and, of course, I was, like, I was crying so hard at that song, I could not be barely scream, even. I just love these songs in Model Pony they put. It's really good. And now we got every single parent revealed. We don't have to need any more parent episodes, eh? And pretty much, the last episode I think is like Fame and Misfortune. Where Twilight like, spreads a book or something and like, many people like, may probably start arguing who wrote the best lessons. I consider it a great premiere. And yeah, so having a premiere for season 7B. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. For the Of course I Go Shorts, I'll have to say they're also good. They got the mirror magic, movie magic, and dance magic. My favorite probably has to be um, mirror magic. Because it's really beautiful. I like how you got this new villain jumper montage. You got defeated. Um, we got movie magic. was extremely interesting to watch. We got a lot of from Daring Do. Then we have an episode. An episode where Rarity actually does like a contest thing with dance magic. And I love the title too. So Yeah. Pretty much, I have to say that Mavony is also getting a movie this year, and I'm totally going to see it. Yes, I'm totally going to see it on live stream, just like with the Star Wars Evil, but this time I'm going to go like on live stream. So yes, I'll be pretty excited. And last, and lastly, I have to say that my pony is getting a new magazine on August 14th with a mystery pony. So I might have to get that magazine. So yeah, guys, the Pony Goes Full signing off.
Who's excited for season 7B? I am! Bye!